in this clip I have the element of surprise on my side, I do not have the energy advantage. So what does the term energy advantage really mean? Well, very simply, it's your ability to convert your high altitude into high airspeed in a descent. This allows you to dive down on your opponent for the attack and then climb up into a superior position once more. All the scissoring motion that's going on in this dogfight is a complete waste of energy because you are putting yourself at the same energy state as your opponent. And if things go sideways, you may not have the energy to be able to get away safely. And here's a really good illustration. It seems that I'm at the same energy level, the same speed as this aircraft, and I can take my time to shoot him down. I managed to kill him just as he approaches his own airfield. Ta-da! But now I have to break it off and head home. Unfortunately, I don't have any energy now that I've made that very steep turn. And you guessed it. Four enemy fighters with a lot more energy than I have are on my tail. Although my Mustang is a very fast machine, it's no match for an aircraft that's built up at speed by diving down with the energy advantage. And so the outcome is basically a foregone conclusion. Outstanding fighter pilots like the Cuban spy who has 32 air kills of human opponents understand things that most of us don't. So let's take a look at some of the aerodynamic effects when you're thinking of zooming and booming or getting into a turn fight. The four forces acting on an aircraft in flight are lift and drag which are closely related, weight is constant and our thrust can be varied. In a climb every aircraft has a particular best rate of climb speed. At 175 miles an hour the Spitfire Mark 14 can maintain a respectable 3,600 feet a minute to 21,000 feet. As we raise the nose to climb, we increase the angle of attack, which generates more lift, but it also generates more induced drag. While you might feel that you're climbing rapidly in a vertical climb, you're actually climbing at a very slow speed, which means your induced drag is very high. And that is not sustainable. And in trying to regain the energy advantage by climbing vertically, you're actually cutting your own throat. So in climbing away from a situation to regain the energy advantage, you want to climb out at your best rate of climb speed. Losing energy and thus airspeed is very easy to do if you're heavy handed on the controls. Much the same effect as a canoe paddle on a canoe. Now in turn fighting, those same forces are still in effect. The greater our angle of bank, the higher the angle of attack, the more induced drag we have and the faster we slow down. But unlike losing airspeed in a climb, we have no altitude to convert to energy. And that's exactly the position I put myself in when I shot down the bomber at the airfield. So the takeaway here is that for every turn and every descent, you're giving away energy that cannot be replaced. So try to climb away smoothly. If your opponent dives steeply away, don't follow him. Climb. Once he's lost all his energy and is looking for you, then you can dive down on him. And if you find yourself in a turn fight over the trees, well, you're in serious trouble. If you're evenly matched, you're in the wrong fight. Make sure you have the energy advantage. As we build up speed in the dive, the ball is off and off center. We need to adjust by adding left rudder to reduce the drag. As for bombers, once they've hit their target, they are low and slow and cannot regain the energy advantage. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please like it or subscribe. Or if there's another topic you'd like me to cover, please leave a comment. Thank you guys.